Hey everyone. Today is kind of a special blog entry for me uh, because I'm going to be talking about a movie that I love called Before Sunrise. And I'm also going to be talking about the young woman who was the inspiration for that movie, Amy Lerhout. In a moment, I'm going to be painting a picture of Amy with both words and photos. But before I get there, I need to set the stage because there's a really interesting special backstory to this movie. Back in 1995, uh, director Richard Linklater, yes, the same Linklater who's up for an Oscar this year for his movie Boyhood, Linklater released a movie in 1995 called Before Sunrise. Before Sunrise is a movie about two young creative people, Jesse and Celine, who meet by chance on a train in Europe. They begin a conversation with one another that is so fun and stimulating and engaging that they decide to get off the train at the same stop in Vienna, where Jesse is due to catch a plane the next morning back to the U.S. So they spend the next seven, eight hours walking, talking, wandering through the streets of Vienna, and most importantly, communicating, connecting, bonding with one another. It's a movie about the joy of initial attraction between two people, and it's an, a movie about what can happen when people drop their guard with one another. So Before Sunrise has become something of an art film classic. It has a 100% ranking on Rotten Tomatoes, and the London newspaper The Guardian ranks it the third greatest romantic movie of all time, one notch below Casablanca. It's pretty good company. So right from the start, uh, Linklater has acknowledged that the movie was based on a real-life experience that he had, that there was a real inspiration for this movie. Back in 1989, uh, then-unknown director Linklater was passing through Philadelphia at night when he met up with a young woman named Amy at a toy store. And they began the same kind of exhilarating conversation that the two characters in the movie did. Uh, Link later describes her this way. She had a crazy, cute, wonderful energy about her. He said, we talked about art, science, film, the gamut. We flirted and had a wonderful night. Neither of us had any agenda, end of quote. But even while the experience was going on, Link later stopped at one point in the middle and said to Amy, you know, I'm going to make a movie about this. And she looked at him and she said, about what? And he said, about this, 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 this thing that's happening between us. I'm going to make a movie about this. And I'm sure they had a good laugh about that at the time. Well, five, six years later, he did make a movie about it called Before Sunrise. And Before Sunrise became popular enough that it gave rise to a sequel called Before Sunset that came out some nine years later, where the two characters reunite after not having seen each other for nine years. And during the press tour for that second movie, Before Sunset, Linklater would tell interviewers that he was hoping to reunite with the real life person who he had met. Uh, he was hoping that she would be aware of the movies and come to one of his screenings. Sometime later, he told Terry Gross of NPR, I would think to myself, okay, I've got a screening in Philadelphia. Maybe she'll show up there. Or I've got a screening later in New York. Maybe I'll see her there. Linklater was hoping that life would imitate art in this case, but she never did. And it was only six years later, in 2010, when Link later learned the important reason why Amy never showed up at those screenings. Link later got a letter from a friend of Amy telling him that Amy had died 16 years earlier in 1994 in a motorcycle accident. Well, Link later was devastated hearing that, not only because she was so vibrant and full of life, but it was doubly poignant for him because Amy died three months before he began filming Before Sunrise. 
So Amy never lived to realize that the idle boast that he had made back in 1989, I'm going to make a movie about this, had actually come to pass. So at that time in 2010, none of us in the public knew anything about this. It wasn't until 2013 when the, the third installment of the trilogy called Before Midnight came out that um, Amy's death became public. Those of us who sat through the film and all the credits got to the end and saw where uh, the movie was dedicated to Amy Lairhout. Linklater, knowing at that time that Amy had passed away, felt a need to pay tribute to her, to acknowledge her, to let people know that Amy Lairhop was an important part of this creative process that had gone on for some 20 years. So that's the backstory to this movie. And the reason I'm talking about Amy today is because we've just had the 20th anniversary of Before Sunrise. And there have been any number of uh, uh, kind of retrospective articles about the movie. And as I, I read the articles, I kept having this nagging desire to know more about Amy. What was she like? What kind of person was she that she would sort of inspire three movies? And I decided that I would go online to find out more about Amy. So I was thinking, well, certainly there's an obit about her, maybe a memorial write-up, uh, possibly a few stray photos floating around the internet. And what I found was nothing, nary a word about Amy. But what I did find was I found Amy's mom. I found a way to contact Amy's mother, Karen. And that very day, with, with great nervousness and apprehension, I called her mother. And I said, I'm Jeff Rowan. I, I really admire the movie Before Sunrise. And as you, I'm sure you're aware, your daughter is very much associated with that movie. And I'd like to learn more about your daughter and maybe do a profile of her. Would you like to share some thoughts, reflections, memories about her? And to my great relief, her mother said, yes, Amy was a wonderful person and I'd be happy to talk about her. And we did for about 20 minutes. And her mother then steered me to another person, Cassandra, who was Amy's best friend growing up. And I eventually talked to Cassandra about her and uh, wound up getting some photos of Amy. So I'm going to post the photos right now. And while they're on screen, I'm going to also give my impressions about Amy, what I learned from Karen and uh, Cassandra about Amy Lairhaupt. This is a picture of Amy at uh, Graceland in 1993. And this is a very cool picture because even though this is Memphis in the 90s, it looks like it could just as easily be Greenwich Village in the 60s. So the first thing I asked Amy's mom was, when did you find out about Amy's connection to the movie? And she was very clear that she said we were the last people to find out about it. Uh, and by we, she meant uh, she and her husband, Michael. Uh, Michael passed away last year, but in 2013, he was there to get the news with Karen. Uh, they read it on a Facebook page and there was a Slate.com story about Amy. And I said, well, how did you react? And she said, we were shocked. Well, were you, were you pleasantly surprised, shocked, or were you taken aback? She said, oh, we were taken aback by it. And I think what she was getting at was that the information was so out of the blue, so out of any context, that they had trouble getting their minds around it at the time, even though the whole idea has sunk in since then. Now, Amy uh, at that time was going to school in Philadelphia. She was interested uh, in design and was a student at the Philadelphia Institute for Textiles and Science at the time. And her interests uh, involved uh, interior design. A little bit later, she got interested in furniture design and construction. And she spent um, two years at the Philadelphia Institute 
uh, before deciding that uh, maybe uh, other schools might fit her needs better. And so she was thinking about applying to the Rhode Island School of Design in Providence, Rhode Island. But eventually uh, she uh, moved to Brooklyn, New York, where she was able to pursue her interest in furniture design and construction. She met Rick at a, a toy store in Philadelphia called The Last Wound Up, which was very well known at the time, but doesn't exist anymore. She was also working at the time at a little restaurant on South Street called Dimitri's, which I believe does exist still. This is a picture of Amy and her dad, Michael, on New Year's Eve, 1993. And they are at the Hershey Hotel in Hershey, Pennsylvania, uh, obviously at a New Year's Eve celebration. I asked Amy's mom about the accident and started by asking, did Amy own a motorcycle? And her mother said, heavens no. Uh, Amy was living in Brooklyn at the time. And uh, in May, uh, she had gone to a party in Manhattan. It was the day before Mother's Day. So the party was getting late. It was late at night, Saturday night and a guy at the party offered Amy a ride home and he drove a motorcycle. It was a rainy, slippery, wet evening and at the time Amy had a, a helmet on uh, and she hopped on the back of the motorcycle and as they were crossing the Brooklyn Bridge he lost control of the motorcycle and Amy went flying off the motorcycle and the impact of her hitting the ground severed her spine. She was kept alive for a day or two through extraordinary means, a ventilator, but eventually she succumbed. And I might add that the driver of the motorcycle was able to walk away relatively unscathed. Uh, there wasn't any clear evidence that uh, he was driving particularly recklessly. It was a one vehicle um, accident. They didn't hit anybody else. Um, so only Amy uh, was harmed. Interestingly, uh, Karen Lehrhaupt has never seen uh, any of the before movies, uh, even though she thought that Amy's siblings uh, had seen them. Amy has three sisters and a brother. And by the time uh, we got to the end of our conversation, uh, Amy's mom was a little bit more curious about seeing Before Sunrise, in part, I think, because uh, she was now seeing it through my enthusiastic eyes. Um, and at the end of our talk, uh, the, one of the last things she said to me was, can I get this on Netflix? Uh, the answer to that is no. It is not streamable on Netflix, but it is streamable on Amazon.com right now. Well, it's easy to see from the first two photos the sparkle and magic in Amy's eyes and why she would have become the muse for Rick Linklater. In this third photo, uh, she is now in Greece with her friend Alex, and they have just walked up 999 steps to the Fortress of Palamede. This picture comes from her friend Cassandra. And the first thing I asked Cassandra was, Cassandra, were you the person who sent Rick Linklater the letter letting him know that Amy had passed away? And she was very quick to respond, no. Not only was I not the person that sent the letter, I didn't even know the connection between Amy and the movie uh, before I found out in 2013. Interestingly, Cassandra had followed Linklater's career. She had seen his movie Slacker, which came out in 1991. She had seen Dazed and Confused, which came out in 93. But she was not aware of the movie before Sunrise, and so had no way of knowing that uh, Amy was the source material for that movie. Um, Cassandra told me that Amy had a good core of friends in Philadelphia at that time, and one of them would have been the person to send the letter. 
which is all very interesting because that that person not only had to have been close enough to Amy to be aware of the original encounter with Licklater, but she had to have followed Linklater's career to know about the before series. And she also had to have been sort of thoughtful enough and generous enough to put pen to paper, because it sounds like this was a regular letter through snail mail, pen to paper, get an, an, an address for him where this letter might actually get to him, write the letter, mail it off. So whoever did this sent him a letter 21 years after he had first met Amy to let him know. Obviously uh, being aware that he was still expecting to see Amy at some point. So whoever did send him the letter did something very special. I then asked Cassandra, well, how did Amy talk about the encounter with Rick? Did she talk about it in the same magical way that he did? And Cassandra laughed and said to me, well, you have to understand what Amy was like. Amy lived her life in such an energetic and creative and spirited way that she was constantly having experiences that were out of the ordinary. She said, you knew if you were going to take a walk with Amy, that it wasn't going to be just an ordinary walk. So even though she may have talked about it in very special terms, uh, there were a lot of things that were going on in her life that were special. So it might not have stood out for Cassandra at that time. Like Amy's mom, Karen, Cassandra told me that she had not seen the movie Before Sunrise and acknowledged that it felt a little bit too close emotionally uh, to see it. She was a bit hesitant about seeing it, even though she hinted in our conversation that now that the subject had come up once again, uh, she might be tempted. So I'm going to finish up with a couple quotes from Linklater that I think express his relationship with Amy very well. In talking with the Times of London, he said to them about Amy, who knows how we reverberate through each other's lives, end quote. And certainly Amy has reverberated through his life over a period of decades. In fact, she's changed the arc of his uh, artistic career. Uh, in an interview with Movie Phone, uh, Linklater said, that's why we always have to give our best selves to everyone, because you never know how you're going to influence people in this world. And that, I think, is what happened. Amy gave her best self to Rick Linklater, and as a result, her spirit will live forever through his movies and through our awareness of her and our appreciation of who she was. So thank you, Amy, for living your life with passion. And thank you, Karen and Cassandra and Cassandra's mom for sharing their time and sharing a little bit of Amy with us. So I will close out now with three remaining pictures of Amy. I'm Jeff Rowan. Thanks for watching. Oh, 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 oh,